Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Wednesday, December 7th. My name is John Shoemaker. I am from the Department of Educational Technology at the School District of Palm Beach County. And I am so excited to uh, have an awesome session here today as we continue CS Ed Week, Computer Science Education Week, and Hour of Code. We are going to be joined by one of my new colleagues, Alex Maxuga who's gonna be sharing us an awesome lesson uh, with NASA and how you can make some pretty cool music with code uh, and code.org. Before we get started though, we always like to go over some few housekeeping rules. So don't forget this session is recorded. We know that most people will probably be watching us on a recording because we're having some network issues in the district, um, but it is recorded. It'll be on our, on our website, in our YouTube channel for eternity. Um, so please feel free to watch the recording, <clears throat> pause it when you need to, and share it with your friends. Also, if you're on Twitter, don't forget to check out our, you, our Twitter page at EdTechPBC. And anything that you are doing, please feel free to tweet out and uh, tag us at EdTechPBC so that we can see what you're doing and then retweet and amplify your voice and your students' voice. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that like button down below and uh, that will allow you to like this video. But when you subscribe, if you click the bell, you actually get notified anytime we upload a video or go live. And then over there on the right as well is our chat box. Please feel free to use the chat box to communicate with us. If you have questions for Alex or anything else, don't hesitate to use the chat box. If it's your first time joining us, you may have to create a channel, which is totally fine. Just log in with your district account, click create channel, give it a name, and voila, you now have access to chat. Um, so with that, uh, I am going to invite my colleague Alex up to talk about NASA Space Jam. And so with that, Alex, I will let you take it away. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm super excited to be here today. My name is Alex Masuga, and like John said, I'm a uh, recent addition to the educational technology team at the Palm Beach County School District. Um, however, I'm a CS teacher at heart. Um, I was very excited when they approached me and asked me to do a quick lesson on this uh, for Computer Science Ed Week. Um, and I'm super stoked to be presenting something from code.org because code.org is also near and dear to my heart. Um, so I was recently, you know, I started with the district six months ago, but before that I was a computer science teacher teaching um, AP Computer Science Principles and Computer Science A at Park Vista High School. So shout out to my Cobra friends. Um, but I'm super excited about this lesson. Um, I'm super excited about this lesson because it's NASA Space Jam. And I'm excited about this one because just in the last few weeks, I took my first trip ever to the um, Kennedy Space Center. And, you know, I've grown up in Florida all my life and I'd never, ever been to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center and any of that. And uh, I took my family there just a few weeks ago and I was just blown away and I loved every minute of that. So when I saw this lesson with code.org, I was super excited, you know, that it was connected to NASA and everything that I had recently done. So let's jump right into this cool activity for CS Ed Week. Um, all you need to do is go to code.org, right here, the website, code.org. You won't need to create an account. You don't need to sign in. You don't do anything. You can just jump right in and start to play with this, which is really cool. So here we are on the front page of code.org. What I want you to do is follow along with me and we'll go right here to the Hour of Code section. Okay, the Hour of Code is part of this celebration of CS Ed Week every year. So we're gonna click on see what's new right here. And then there's some really cool NASA stuff on here that I already looked at and watched, which is pretty cool. But what I want you to do is jump right down here to this NASA's Space Jam. This is the one that I'm gonna be covering today. Now, of course, you can see there's several other you know, activities in there. And if you explored even more, you'd find even more cool coding projects to do. But in this particular day, in this particular session, we're gonna cover Space Jam. So just right there, code.org, and they're gonna click on Space Jam. And we're right here in the beginning of the lesson. And just as I said, don't have to sign in, don't have to create any accounts. You know, Of course, you could do that if you wanted to, but for this activity, you don't. So here we are, we're gonna create a cool little solar system that really rocks and uh, it's kind of cool. I messed around with this before preparing for this lesson. Um, 
just jumping out of the gate, if you look at this page, there's some good resources for you and your students. There's some science behind all of the stuff that we're going to look at here. Um, some definitions, some vocabulary, sonification. You know, that's something that, you know, I did hear about a few weeks ago at the Kennedy Space Center. And then, you know, there's some vocabulary on this side. Now, there's science over here. And we're also talking about music. So if you look at some of these terms, star, planet, exoplanet, orbit, those are all your science terms. But if you look further down, I've got scales, as in a musical scale, an ordered sequence of notes. And then here's an octave, you know, in music, the jump between one musical pitch and another is called an octave. So we're going to see some of that cool stuff, you know, music teachers, if you're paying attention, you know, this applies to music teachers as well, science teachers, history teachers, any, all of you teachers out there, this applies to all of you. So pretty cool little lesson. So, and if you continue further on the page, just for future reference, there's all sorts of video references. If you want, this is something you want to do later with your students. There's tremendous resources down here at the bottom of the page that will walk you through this lesson, kind of like I'm going to do today. So with that being said, let's hit this little get started button here and get started. Okay. So what you're looking at here is the workspace, you know. This is familiar to me because I've been working with code.org for the last several years, but this may be your first time inside of code.org. And if, if it is, great, welcome. Okay, but this is your workspace. So if you look at this, there's a couple of sections. There's some instructions up here that says draw a background. Down here is your toolbox. Okay. And over here is your basically the toolbox here is your workspace. And everything that you code and program over here is gonna run on your screen over here. So we're gonna create some cool little programs right here in the toolbox. And then we're gonna be able to watch those things happen and those programs run in this white space here, okay? So up here on the draw background, the instruction section, there is a little three dot menu right here between the toolbox and the draw background instruction section, right? So we're gonna drag this down just a little bit so that I can see what the instructions are that I need to do. So this is, you know, completely movable, so you can see what the full instructions are for this particular module. We're going to walk through these eight little short modules and put this little cool lesson together. So you can move this down, and there's our instruction. So now, what we're doing, um, we're not pro programming in a particular language right now. This is called block programming. So right now, we're just, you know, going to click some blocks together. And we're going to give the computer some instructions on what ne we need to run. So we're not coding in Java. We're not coding in, you know, JavaScript. We're not coding in Python, anything like that right now. That's all future type stuff if you're interested in something like this. But this is just simple block programming where we put together a series of instructions and tell this computer what we want it to do. So that's what we're going to start on. So if you look at our instructions up here, it says uh, move the create background block from the toolbox into the setup block, okay? It says choose your favorite background image, and this will create a background, but it won't be visible yet. To see your background, move the draw background block into the loop. So let's let's mess around with the first part of that. It said, okay, move the create background block from the toolbox into the setup block. So you'll notice there's a couple of blocks here, and it's got empty spaces where we can click things into it. So. If you notice, I can just click and drag this little block, create block, and you notice there's a nice little place in here where it'll click in. You'll hear a nice little sound effect that you just click that block together right there. So we're in the setup block right now, and it says create background. Now you'll notice there's a little drop down here where there's all kinds of options. And the instructions said, choose your favorite image, right? So I don't know, let's pick one, doesn't matter to me. Um, we'll pick this one, okay? Now, also notice in the instructions that it says, okay, it'll create a background, but nothing will be visible yet. Now, the reason that is, is because we're setting up, right? We're setting up the computer to do something, but we haven't done anything over here that says, hey, run or computer, go and do this program. Nothing is happening, right? Now, even I want to point something out here. Even if I press run now, I'm still getting nothing happening here because I haven't done anything on this next block yet. So we're setting up what we want the computer to do here, and we're gonna add some more blocks down here in the loop section to get it to run on the screen. So I'm gonna hit stop here, okay? If we continue to look at our instructions, it says to see your background, move the draw background block into the loop block, and then press run, okay? So now let's try that. 
So I'm going to click the draw background block. We're going to click it right here in place on the loop. Okay. So now I've got a setup where it's going to create a background. And now I have a loop. Now, loop is a really cool computer science term, right? And simply what that means in computer science terminology, loop, we wanted to do something over and over and over and over again until we could tell the computer to stop. Like I could hit run on this thing and walk away for hours. And because it says loops there or loop there, it would run forever until I made the computer stop. The computer would just say, okay, this is what you want me to do. I'm going to do it forever until you tell me to stop. And that's what it would do. So let's try that. I'm not going to walk away for an hour or anything, but here, let's hit run. So now what you'll notice on my screen, it doesn't really look like anything's happening. Although, you know, I just got a congratulations message there, right? But if you look over here, my computer is running. It's running the little program. There's your first program, right? It's running the program that we just created, right? We want to create a background. And then I want you to draw it and just leave it on the screen looping forever. So if you look, I've got a cool little background there. And it's running in the, in the background. So with that, our first little module is done. So we've drawn a background on the screen. And we've got it to loop. So I'm going to hit continue right here. Okay. And that's going to take me to module number two now. Um, so here we are in module number two. Now, don't worry that the background has changed here. The instructions have just, you know, they've given us a little, a couple little blocks to work with and it, it changed the background. So if your background changed here, no stress. Okay. So we're going to move this down a little bit. So now it says, can you figure out how to create and draw a star on top of the background? Okay. So I'm not sure if any of you are messing around yet, but okay. Previous lesson, we learned how to draw a background, right? So it's probably similar to draw a star. I got a couple of more blocks available, right? So now it says, let's draw a star and put it on top of the background, okay? So here's a create star block. Now, it says, put it on top of the background. So what you want to think about here and what computers do when they listen to our instructions is they do everything exactly in order, okay? They do everything in exactly in order that we put the program in, okay? So now this says, how do you create and draw a star on top of the background? So we want a star to appear on top of this background, right? So now that doesn't mean that I'm going to go and put it up here, okay? I'm not going to put it on top of the background here. I want it to show up in front, basically, of our background, right? So I want to do... Create star next. So what it's going to do, it's going to draw the stars in the background. And then the next little set of instructions is going to create a star. Okay. So now what you'll notice here, just like we had backgrounds, we have options for the stars. So any star that you want, I'll do a nice one that looks similar to Earth. So I'll do a little, you know, light blue, green looking star. So I can, any one that I want, it doesn't matter. Pick whichever one that you want. And now notice I have a size over here. I have a size of 50. Okay. Now, anytime there's blocks like this inside of our little blocks that we're clicking together, these are things that we can change. So, um, I don't know, create a background. Then it says create a star size 50. Now down here on our loop block, we have draw background. Okay. Now we want to draw a star, right? So, okay. Same thing. We're going to draw the background first. Then we're going to draw the star. So can anybody guess what's going to happen here when I hit run? We're probably going to get a nice background, right? And then a star, a blue star on top of it. Okay, so let's hit run and check that out. Okay, so far so good. And because, again, there's my little – I'm going to keep playing for a second. So there's my little message to say, hey, congratulations. So what you'll notice what happened there is I created the background first. And if we're, like, looking from above down at this picture, if you think about it, that star is on top of our background, right? So this is kind of what I was pointing out, that you don't want to put the block on top. Here, I'll show you, okay? Let's say for some reason that you misinterpreted the instructions and you said, okay, I'm going to create a star first and then the background, and then we're going to do this, okay? Okay? So if I do that, what do you think is going to happen when I hit run? Okay, you're going to be like, where did my star go? Okay, it said to put it on top of the background. That's what I did. I created a star. But again, like I said, the computer is going to do everything in exactly the order that you program it to do, right? So 
the computer is not the smart one in all of this. We are the smart ones, right? We are the computer scientists. We're the ones that are telling the computer what to do, not the other way around. I mean, computers are getting smarter, but we're still the ultimate scientists in all of this, right? Okay. So the instructions kind of said that, draw a star on top, but it did that. It put the star first, and then it drew a background, and then when we looped it, it drew the star first, and then it put a background on top. So if it looks like your star disappeared, that's what happened. I mean, it still drew it. It's just underneath. So let's reverse that back, okay? So now you'll notice that exactly in the order, do the background first, then create the star, and then down here, draw the background first, and then draw a star. So we hit stop and run again, and here we're back. So that's module two. Now, if you have any questions about that, you can put it in the chat, et cetera, et cetera. But we're gonna move on now to number three, okay? Let me hit stop here. So module three, okay? So now if we're thinking about the solar system and the universe that we, the part of the universe that we live in, right? We know that the sun is in the center and there's nine planets orbiting around. So now we're gonna make some stuff move on the screen. Have a little bit of fun here. So you'll notice that in my toolbox, I got a couple more blocks, right? Some of them are familiar. Some of them look new, okay? Draw planet, create planet. So let's move my instructions out of the way here and see what it wants us to do. So now I said, let's get some things moving. So we've got a star in the middle. Let's imagine that that's our sun, right? Okay. So now we're gonna drag a create planet block into the workspace and connect it within the setup block, okay? So if you remember, we just drag these blocks over. It's going to do a background first and then the star. And now let's do a planet. Okay. So now, just as I said before, inside of these blocks that you're clipping together, there's plenty of things that you can change, right? It says create planet. So let's click on this little box. Okay. I've got all sorts of colors, right? So let's just pick a random color. Here's a nice green one, right? Uh, you could choose whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Let's say size, all right, so size 10. Uh, we'll leave it at 10 and see what happens, okay? And then it says period one, okay? So if you don't know what period is, okay, let's take a look at my instructions. Try changing the size, period, and angle of your planet to see what effect they have. So it says the orbital period of a planet is how long it takes one orbit around its star. The orbital period of the Earth is one year, right? So we all know that the end of the year is coming, so you know January 1st, that means we're going to take one complete orbit around the sun in our solar system. So those are the things that we can adjust there. So we'll keep size at 10. We'll keep period at 1 like we're familiar with on Earth. And now this angle button is interesting, okay? So let's click on angle, and now you'll notice that I have this kind of clock-looking thing. And if you're second grade through eighth grade through high school, whatever it is, you know that a circle goes around in 360 degrees. So basically wherever you put this red line for your angle is where the planet is gonna start its orbit or its period, right? So I don't know, let's put it right up here at the top at 90, okay? Again, you could put this to whatever you want, all right? So I have a size 10, a period of one, angle of 90, okay? So now don't forget my loop block. We want a planet created, so we need to drag our draw planet block, okay? So now I think we've done everything there. So now let's see if something moves on our screen. All right. So there I've got a nice little, right? I've got a nice little planet orbiting the sun in my solar system, right? And the period and the size, you know, I can change all of this that I want, right? So if I hit stop for a second, you'll notice that it started right up here where I told it to start. And now in one period, it goes around. Okay, so I just created a planet in a green color that's orbiting the sun, All right? So that's pretty cool too. Now, if you think about it, we've, we're walking through three modules and look what we've got this computer to do for us, right? And some of you may be coming on here with zero programming knowledge, but if you look at what your screen, that's your first computer program, right? Welcome to computer science. It's pretty exciting, it's pretty cool. Like we just made this computer do something for us and follow our instructions, all right? So we got something orbiting there, we got something moving. Things are good, things are pretty cool, all right? And again, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the chat and we'll go forward from here. So let's 
let's see what else we can do with this now, right? Because it's called Space Jam, right? We're heading towards some music and movement and really cool stuff. So let's go to module four. Here's module four. Let's take a look at our instructions up here. Still the same block, still the same create planet. But now this one says draw all planets. Okay, now that's a little bit different than what we just did, right? Draw all planets. Okay, last time we only drew one. So I don't know, let's make a few planets now then. Okay, and the way I make a few planets is just drag however many I want in here, right? So I don't know, let's pick three. Okay, and just like before, we can do whatever color we want, right? We can do whatever color we want, whatever size we want. So the last one was 10. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. Let's make this one a little bit bigger, right? I don't know, 15, 165 might be too big, okay? So I got three different size planets. You remember the first one was like one time around, like one year for us. I don't know, let's make the other one uh, two. And let's make this one three. I don't know. I'm picking random numbers, right? This is an amazing thing about computer science, too, and for Computer Science Ed Week, right? This is your program. You can run this and test it as many times as you want, right? Okay, so if you, all right, I want to make that one go slower. Let's go try it again. Let's change the number. Uh, I think this one we started at 90 before. I don't know. Let's pick a different number. Let's go down here to start this one. And let's move over here to 180 for the third one, okay? So what I'm doing right there is I've created three planets, correct? Okay, and now I have this new block called Draw All Planets. So if you can guess and you've been following along with me so far, what do you think is going to happen on this program when I hit run, right? I think I'm going to have three planets orbiting around the sun at the very least, right? But based on some of these changes that we made, I might have three planets of different sizes, right? I might have them going faster or slower, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know. Let's try it out, right? This is the really cool thing about computer science and computer programming, right? Test it out. See what, if it, what it does, right? If you don't like what it did or you think you can make it better, go back in and change your program and make it better. So let's hit run and see what this one does. Wow, that's pretty cool, right? Now that's even cooler, right, than what we just did. I had a green one before, but now I've got three. So you'll notice that with changing of these periods, you know, how fast it goes around the sun, right? You'll notice that the dots, I know they're moving pretty fast, but the dots are of different size, right? Okay. And then the starting positions of each one. So on my screen, now I got something pretty cool running here, right? I've got three planets orbiting a sun in the middle on a background of stars that I created. So, so far, so good, right? All right, let's continue on. Let's see if we can get this thing to play some music and do some other cool stuff, right? Because I, I don't know about you, but that's pretty cool for me, right? And like, I don't know, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of code, if you want to call it, eight little blocks. We've gotten the computer to do that for us, and that's pretty cool, right? So let's hit stop here. And again, questions or comments, leave them in the in the chat there and we'll see if we can answer those for you. So now let's go to module five. All right, let's look at number five here. It's, it, it just looks like it got really complicated, right? Well, no, let's just continue, right? If we look over here on our little workspace. Oh, okay, there's the background, there's the star, there's the planet, we've done all that before. Here's the... Draw all planets, okay. So far, so good. So I know what that is, but now let's see. Create and draw a string now by placing the create string button or block and a draw string block in the right position. So based on what we've learned so far, we know that we want to put this create string block into our setup. And then when we draw that string, we want to put it inside the loop, right? Okay. So if we continue on our instructions, so if you place the if planet crosses string block inside of the loop block, it'll keep checking to see if a planet has crossed the string, okay? And now there's this new red block that says, okay, place the pluck string within the if planet crosses. So sounds complicated, but let's see what we can do, right? Um, for this particular module, I'll keep it simple with one planet, but just remember if you want to do more planets, you can do that. Let's do some more, right? Let's do three again. 
Okay. Again, any color you want. Any color you want. That wasn't a fun green, right? Okay, let's go here. And then let's do a red one. Okay. I'll change the sizes a little bit again. Okay. Whoa, not 235. That would be huge. Okay. Period. Again, we'll change this to like one, two, and three. Remember the period is the amount of time it takes to go around. And, you know, again, we can keep the angles like this if we want. But if we're going to get it to play music, we might want to change it up a little bit. So I don't know. Let's pick one here. 180 right there. And we'll just change these angles to whatever we want. Okay. Now, the rest of the instructions. So if I again, if again I hit run here, what is it going to do? Exactly what we had in the last module, right? Draw all the planets that I just created. Okay, but now we're going to add some music to this. All right, so let's hit stop. So now it says if you place the if planet crosses string block within the loop block. Okay, so here is the if planet cross crosses string. Okay, so now this is a really cool computer science term as well. Okay. It's an if statement. So you're telling the computer, like, okay, if something happens, I want you to do this. Is basically what you're telling the computer, right? If something happens, and in this case, if one of these planets crosses a string, what do I want it to do? You'll notice the red block that it gave us plucked the string, okay? So let's put that one in there, okay? So if you think about a guitar, we're going to put a string on the screen, right? And if a planet crosses that string, we're going to make it play a note. Okay, so let's see what happens there. All right, one thing we're forgetting is we got to put a draw string in there. Okay, so right below my all planets, I'm going to put a string. Okay, so it's going to draw the background, draw the star in the middle, draw all the planets that I created, and then it's going to draw a string on the screen. So now let's hit run and see what happens. Interesting. Okay, and this is the this is the experience of a computer science. So I need to figure out why it's not working. Okay, which is interesting. So let's take a look and hit stop. Okay, create planets, draw the background, draw the star, draw all the planets, and then draw a string. Okay, hmm. What did I forget? This is a good thing to go back to your instructions, and this is a great part of the lesson too. And I will admit, I kind of did this on purpose, just so you would see a mistake, right? And this is the heart. This is the heart of computer programming, right? Well, that didn't do what it was supposed to do. So let's figure out what's wrong. This is called debugging. You might have heard that term before. Okay, so I'm looking for bugs. Like, okay, I drew a string down here. So how come the string didn't happen up here? Okay, when I go to my setup, okay, I drew a background, a star, and three planets, but nowhere. Did I create a string for it to check, right? So there's my mistake, okay? So we're going to do create a string, okay? And we'll make the string white so that everybody can see it on the screen really good. And the angle, again, wherever you want it to start, wherever you want the string to be, I'll leave it over here at zero, okay? So now when I hit run, okay, you know what you'll notice the computer did there too is that it followed your instructions, but then it stopped there because it didn't know what else to do. It had no idea what draw string or if it crosses a string, it didn't know what to do. So it just sat there. Okay. So now let's hit run and see what happens. Okay. Interesting. I should be hearing a sound. Okay. No. Never mind. Okay. The sound is coming. I'm sorry. Right. I'm looking ahead because I'm excited. Okay. So what you'll notice on the screen, if I keep playing right here, so now there's my three planets orbiting, right? Orbiting around the sun in the middle, and they're each going at their own speeds based on the period that I put in. And then here's my white string. And you'll notice as each one, like, what does it say? If it crosses the string, pluck the string, right? So you can kind of see it getting plucked like a guitar would be getting plucked, right? Okay. So you can see that my computer program is working as it should. I found my little error, corrected the error, and now we're, we're moving forward, right? So now we get to the exciting part where we're going to make that string make some sound, okay? So follow me to module number six.
Module number six here. Okay, let's take a look at what's going around. Let's look at my instructions. Okay, I've got a new set planet drum, right? Within the create planet block to set a drum sound for that planet, okay? And then place the play planet drum block in the right spot so that you're a drum when the planet crosses the string, okay? So now we're going to get some beats going. So let's see what happens, okay? The first part of the instructions, set planet drum, okay? So here's my set planet drum, and we're going to put that inside of this create planet, right? Okay, now that create planet block is almost exactly the same as the one we've looked at before. But now you'll notice that I can put blocks inside of there, right? So I'm going to create a planet. Let's make it red. Here's my size. Let's make it the period is fine. Here's 180 for the start angle. That's fine too. Okay. I've got my create a string. Okay. And then it says play or place the play planet drum. Well, I've said that a few times. Place the play planet drum block in the right spot so that you hear a drum when it crosses the stream. So where do you think the right spot is to play the planet drum, right? Probably down here. So when we pluck the string, we want a sound to happen, right? So let's do that. And we'll go down here, play planet drum, okay? So now you'll notice on the, the set plan, there's different sounds, right? I've got a kick, I've got a snare. I've got a hi-hat. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. So I don't know. Let's pick a, I don't know, crash cymbal sounds good. Let's try that one, right? Okay. So now if you notice, or if you're anticipating like me, what do you think is going to happen here? This planet's going to probably orbit around the sun in the middle. It's going to pluck the string and make a cymbal sound, right? So let's check our program. I don't know if you can hear it on your screen, but you should. Okay. So now we got something cool happening, right? Where, okay, it's orbiting, it's crossing the string, it's plucking the string, and now it's playing a sound, right? So now we're getting to the space jam part of this lesson, which is pretty cool. All right. Maybe I should have picked another here. Let's pick a less obnoxious sound. Um, let's do a snare drum okay see i can just change the sound there with one little drop down. all right there's another beat so now you can see that you can do some really cool stuff here right okay and again what are we doing we're giving the computer exactly the instructions of the things that we want to happen right exactly in order background star planet and i want the red star or I want, i'm sorry i want the red planet to go this fast and have this sound, okay? So let's check this out. So we're gonna move forward a little bit. So hopefully everybody got some sound going on, right? And if you think about the three planets that we had before, all going at different speeds, and then we assign different sounds, let's get to the cool stuff now. All right, so on to module seven. We're almost done, people. Module seven, all right, same kind of setup. Let's look at my instructions here. Place the set planet note to a C4, right? Put that block within a create planet block to set a particular note now to that planet. And then it says you can use the set planet note, and we can do different scales, et cetera, et cetera. And now instead of a drum sound, we can get a musical note, okay? We can also get drums if we want. So let's take a look here. Set planet note C4 block within a create planet. So, all right, let's go here. And it says set the planet note to C4. All right, we'll stick with my original. We'll do a red planet. We'll keep everything the same there. Size 10, period 1, 180. So it's going to start right there. Okay. Uh, and then my instructions say, okay, you can use the set planet note scale to a particular note. And if you're a music person like I was a really long time ago, you remember major and minor scales. All right, so let's check that out. It says set planet note instead if you'd like to choose the notes from a certain scale. Okay, so if I just if I didn't just want C4 or something and I wanted to get a little more fancy, I could do this, right? Let's say I want to 
major, uh, look, major pentatonic scale. I don't know. I don't even remember that. Okay, but let's change it and see what it does, right? All right. So we've got all that. And now it says play planet note, okay, when we pluck the string. So let's see what happens here now. I put the play planet note when it hits the string now. Instead of a drum beat, we're going to get a musical note, right? So let's try this program. Okay, now hopefully you can hear that, right? Kind of cool. Right? Very hypnotic almost. Okay, so now not a drum beat, but I've got a note, right? Okay, now here's where the fun stuff comes. And this is where the sandbox is wide open for you because I've kind of taught you along the way through seven models. But let's go to number eight here because we're looking at, I'm looking at 36 minutes right now. All right, I'm almost there. So now free for all, right? You can do whatever you want. So I don't know. Let's just mess with this and see what it does. We're going to create our own space jam. So let's see. I want three planets again, right? So let's just drag three empty planet blocks in here, correct? And then let's say on one of them, I wanted to play a drum, right? I don't know. Let's make this our red one. And it's going to do a drum kick, and we want to start it. Now, where you're going to get some musical variety here is to change up where these things start, right? So just pick random angles, right? And then let's say on this planet, we want it to be a green one, right? And we'll make this one a little bit bigger. I don't know, size 20. And then, hmm, I wonder. This is a question you might ask yourself. If I make the planet bigger, will the sound be louder? I don't know. Let's try it out. That's pretty cool, right? Let's make this one go a little bit slower. Okay, and we'll just pick a random start point for that. Okay, and let's say I want the green planet to play a note, right? I don't know, pick one, F3. I kind of remember those from way back in high school band. So let's pick one of those notes, okay? So there's a green planet, and I don't know, let's pick, um, change this one up a little bit, 15, and just do another different starting spot. Again, these numbers you can mess around with and do whatever you want, right? And we'll make this planet blue, right? I don't know. Let's make it a little, let's make it yellow. There we go. And on this one, I'm gonna do one of those fancy notes, right? Uh, major pentatonic. Pick one. C4, right? Okay. So now I've got three three planets, right? I've got a drum sound, I got a note sound, I got another note sound. I don't know, let's do one more just to see what it does, right? Uh, here's an orange one, and I don't know, we'll keep it at 10, and we'll do a uh, four, right? And we'll do another drum sound. I don't know, a cymbal, a hi-hat, there we go, okay? Again, this is just willy-nilly. This is where you have all the fun and make it do something really cool and create your own space jam, right? Now, notice up here also it said you can create multiple strings. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that, right? You could add multiple strings all over this screen, all around the circle, right? Okay. But for interest of time, again, I'm going to leave that alone. So I think everything's working. I'm going to cross my fingers and see if we can get some, some kind of cool jam here. All right. So let's hit run. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure that song's going to win any Grammy awards or anything, but wow, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. And if I had multiple strings all over the screen, I might get something pretty cool. So feel free to tinker around with that. But look at that. I just made four planets orbit a sun in the universe and when it crosses a certain point, play a drum or a musical note just a few steps programming the computer so pretty cool and if you've never coded before you have to admit with me that that's pretty cool right so you didn't think you were a computer scientist before you started but look at you now right you've got a nice little solar system playing music for you and this is something you could take home to your parents take home to your friends say hey check this out i programmed this myself and have a little fun with it so that is nasa's space jam Okay, and again, questions or comments for me, I'd love to hear from you, right? Just leave them in the chat or on the stream. And then if you're watching this as a recording, 
email me. Okay, I'm at the District Office of Palm Beach County School District. Shoot me an email and send me a link to your project so I can listen to your own space, Jan, so we can have a little fun with this. So with all of that, I thank you for joining me today. It's pretty awesome. I was excited. You know, that took me right back to the classroom and computer science and teaching program. It was pretty fun and uh, amazing. And I guess, you know, I'll admit right here live on YouTube that I do miss it a little bit, but I'm on an incredible team and I'm uh, super stoked to be doing what I'm doing. So with that, I'll kick it back to John and wrap this thing up. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Alex. And there were some great tools in there for code.org. And the thing I love about the code.org website is if space isn't your thing, there is something on that website that is going to get you interested in coding. Uh, there are so many other tools there as well. So don't forget to explore the entire code.org website and build whatever you would like to build and learn how to code. Um, from there, Alex said to email him. You can also hit us up on Twitter. Don't forget our Twitter account is at EdTechPBC. Feel free to uh, share your projects there as well. Have your teacher share what you're doing there too. Before we do leave though, I want to uh, remind everyone, one of our uh, highly anticipated and our favorite events is coming up shortly. Uh, in just two weeks, we're gonna be doing our virtual learning experiences for winter. We're gonna be going to three different places. First, we're gonna hit up the Great Smoky Mountains and go down a, uh, a path there and learn about the Great Smoky Mountains. If you've been with us at all, you know we've been to Shenandoah and a couple of other national parks. So this is awesome. I'm excited to see uh, Tim join us again with his trip to, to the Great Smoky Mountains. And then we will also be visiting um, the Loggerhead Marine Life Center. Uh, I know a lot of people loved looking at the turtles and all of that last time. And we're also going to hopefully hit up the Manatee Lagoon. And fingers crossed this year, it's cold enough to be able to see some manatees out there in the Manatee Lagoon. Um, the great thing about the virtual learning experience is you can join us live on those last uh, two days of that three-day week. Uh, you can join us live on those two days or... You can show the recording to your students any time of the day. So um, don't forget to check that uh, check that out. It is all on our website, edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. The calendar is right on that main page with all the dates and times, and it will link again directly to the uh, to the YouTube channel and the the video. And if you can't join us live, it will also that link is also the recording link. So with that, uh, we also have our Fines Elementary Edition. Uh, we had to postpone from yesterday. We tried to do it yesterday, but uh, we're having some network issues in the district as well. Um, so John Long, as kind of his, uh, his last big thing, will be his Fines Part 2. When we come back from break, um, he will be here that last week, that first week of January, to do the Fines Elementary Edition and close up that project. So keep an eye out on our website for that uh, date and time as well. And so on behalf of the entire EdTech team, my name is John Shoemaker. We want you to have a great CS Ed week and don't forget if you need anything at all, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact us. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great week everyone. Bye-bye.